minutes, take a few minutes and just say, Lord, you are worthy. You are holy. You are mighty. Oh God, there is no one like you. No one beside you. the God that we will praise beside you my father there's no other God that we will worship apart from you my God father we love you this morning and we welcome you into this place we welcome you in this place father God we aren't the only ones here this morning you are here with us my father the heavenly host is here father God the angel of the Lord is here right now so, Father God, we come and we give you praise, my God. We give you all the glory, Father. We give you all the majesty, Father God. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you that, Father God, we haven't just come to spectate. We haven't just come to watch other people lift their hands. But we have come to give you glory. We have come to honor you. We have come to magnify you. We have come to minister to you, my God. We have come, Father God, to bring pleasure to your heart, my Father. Lord, we give back the breath that you have given us. And we just want to say that we love you, Father. We worship you, Lord. We adore you, Father God. We've come to this place to give ourselves to you, Father. We are the living sacrifice, my God. So, Lord, we lift up our hearts to you. We lift up our lives to you. All that we are. Father God, Lord, we just honor you this morning. We worship you. We adore you. We magnify you, Father God. We've come here for you, Father God. We've come with an expectation of you, Father God. Father God, we're not going to leave the same, Father God. We didn't just come to sing a few songs and hear a word, Father God. We came to encounter you, Lord Jesus. We came to meet with you, my God. We came, Father God, to see you face to face. If that is you this morning, and you've come to church because you're saying, God, I need you. God, I want you. God, I want to touch from you. Now is your moment, amen. Lock yourself in with God. And say, Lord, I've just come here for you, Father. I'm here for you, Father God. I'm here for you, Father God. Father, come and visit us, my Lord. Come and open the heavens, Father. Come and rain down upon us, my God. Father God, we receive from you today, Father God. Hallelujah, my Father. Come on, just lift up your hands in this place. God is here, God is here, God is here, God is here. Don't miss out on what he wants to do in your life. Don't miss out on the flow of his spirit this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father God. We thank you for your presence, Father God. We thank you for your presence, Father God. You are not far in you are not absent, Father God. You haven't disappeared, Father God. You haven't turned your back on us, my God. But you are here, Father. You are here, Father God. You are here and you are ready to move. You are here and you are ready to touch. Even now, Father. Even now we are receiving healing, Father. Even now we are receiving breakthrough, Father. 
Even now we are hearing your voice, my God. Even now you are touching our hearts. Even now you are comforting us, my God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 How we love your presence, Father God. How we love your presence, Father God. Come on, take a few more moments. We don't rush out of God's presence. How we love your presence, Father God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, my Lord. There's a song that goes, it says, you are here in this place how we've waited for moments like this have your way in this place holy spirit come do as you wish father god you are here you are here you are here and have your way father have your way lord jesus thank you thank you thank you may be seated in his presence hallelujah our God is alive amen he's a God who moves he's a God who holds us he's a God who comes to our aid he's a God who just you know when we welcome him in he comes in amen the word of God says when we draw near to God he draws near to us and we know that our steps might be small but God's strides are bigger than ours. So when he draws near to us, he comes in his fullness. Amen. He comes in all his power and all his grace and all his majesty. And this morning as we get ready to receive and hear the word of the Lord, I want you to just say, Lord God, I'm drawing near, Father. But I thank you that when I draw near, you draw closer still. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Father God. You're all we need, Father. Our theme this month is Dare to Flow. If you can just put up the theme for the month, guys. Thank you. Our theme for the month is Dare to Flow. Thank you. And the key scripture is Ezekiel 47 verse 9. And I'd encourage you to meditate on this verse. And the end part of Ezekiel 47 verse 9 says this. So where the river flows, everything will live. Amen. Where the river flows, everything will live. If you are here this morning and you say, God, there are some dead areas in my life. There are some barren areas. There are some areas that need life in them. Then you need to say, God, I need the river of your spirit to come and flow in my life. Hallelujah. If that is you here this morning, just raise your hand with me because I'm raising my hand and I'm saying, Holy Spirit, come and flow like a river in my life. Holy Spirit, come and flow like a river in this church. Holy Spirit, we need the life that you bring in Jesus' name. Amen. Rivers team with life and I want you to picture that this morning. So for those of you who are quite creative, I want you to picture a river, a flowing river with all the fish that are swimming and the dragonflies that are going over the surface and the weeping willow that is branching over, right? And you've got all your flowers growing up there and you've got your animals who are coming and they're drinking at the water, they, they're chilling over there, they're running away from some of the predators that come along, but there's this river and it's just this hive of activity. You look at a river and immediately you think life and you think health and you think something that is just fresh. You know, that's the image a river actually presents to us. And rivers are not stagnant bodies of water. A river isn't just, I'm here for me, myself, and I know. A river flows. A river is constantly moving, bringing health and life, not just to what's within it, but also to the surrounding areas. And that's important to us because we need the river of the Holy Spirit 
to flow not just within us to bring life, but to flow out of us so that those around us can experience the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit isn't just for me. The Holy Spirit is for me, in me, but through me for someone else as well. Hallelujah. And this is how the Word of God says it in John 7 verses 37 to 39. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. This is Jesus speaking. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Where's the start? The spirit starts in you and flows out so that there's that rivers of life-giving power that flows out and touches and changes those around you and the atmosphere around you as well. By this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Now, Jack Hayford puts it like this. He says, rivers are channels or conduits to places where the refreshing of water is needed. So what does that mean for us? You are a conduit wherever you go to bring life and refreshing to others by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if ever you thought that you had no purpose, just in that one sentence, God is telling you when your Holy, when His Holy Spirit is within you, your purpose is to let that Spirit flow out of you so that the lives around you can be touched and changed. Amen. And then Jack Hayford continues. The Gospel of John pinpoints that the work of the Spirit as rivers of living water was to become available after Jesus' ascension. So we know that when Jesus ascended and was seated at the right hand of the Father, the Father sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and it's still happening today. We still have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. It was not just a once-off event in Scripture. It's the lives that we live today as believers. And then he says, the Holy Spirit is manifest in rivers in order that the Lord would make you, point to yourself, in order that the Lord would make me, right? An overflowing tributary of his Holy Spirit, fullness, life, and love to others. I want you to hear this this morning. The Lord wants people to get in touch with who he is. And that takes people who will let the rivers of living water be awakened in them and then gush out of their lives. Is that you this morning? Are you one of those people who says, I want the rivers of living water to awaken within me and to gush out of me in Jesus' name. So as our theme this year is dare, this month, sorry, is dare to flow, I want to challenge you, dare to flow with the Holy Spirit. Come on, young and old, there isn't an a age limit on this. I mean, little kids filled with the Spirit can have an overflow of the Spirit gushing out of them. The most elderly person in this church can have the same thing. All of us, no matter what our age is, I want to encourage you, dare to flow with the Spirit and dare to overflow with His life-giving power. Dare to change your atmosphere in your home because of the power of the Spirit within you. Dare to change the environment at work. Dare to change the tone that is set in your marriage, in your relationship with your kids, in your business, through the power of the Spirit that dwells within you. Amen? Amen? Are you accepting the challenge? I want you to say challenge accepted. There we go. It's on. It's on. <laughs> so I do not have a specific key verse today, right? I've got a couple of verses. I think there's only about 16 of them that I gave, <laughs> that I gave to the media. To, you know, 16, give or take a thousand. No, I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> and what I'm actually going to be talking about today is to, well, to use those scriptures, number one, to help us to understand who the Holy Spirit is, because I don't take it for granted that people automatically know who the Holy Spirit is. Because I must say, after I got born again, I didn't know immediately who the Holy Spirit was. It actually took me some time to actually understand who the Holy Spirit was and the role that he plays, right? So today what I'm actually going to be ministering on is using those scriptures for us to understand who the Holy Spirit is, 
the vital role that he plays in our lives and how he works in us. Amen. And the key thing when you talk about the Holy Spirit is that it's not just words. It's a lifestyle and it's who you experience. Right. So I'm going to relate everything to what it is that we then do as believers because we encounter the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not just some separate thing that we learn about theoretically. Amen. So my sermon today is titled, He's Not It. He's Not It. And I want to start off with this because it's important to understand that the Holy Spirit is not an it. He is not a thing. He is not some weird body floating out somewhere dis dislocated that we need to be afraid of. But the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God in Genesis 1 verse 2 that hovered and was brooding over the deep. Amen. He is the Spirit of the Lord in Isaiah 61 verse 1 who anointed Jesus to proclaim good news to the poor and sent him to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father in Matthew 10 verse 20 who will give you utterance when you are persecuted or when you are questioned for your faith. He is the Spirit of the Son who is Jesus, right? He is the Spirit of the Son in Galatians 4 6 whom God has sent into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. Amen. The Holy Spirit thinks. The Holy Spirit feels. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. He acts and he moves. So the Holy Spirit is a person. He is not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. And when we talk about the Holy Spirit, have you all heard of the Trinity? What do we say? God the Father? God the Son? God the the Holy Spirit. Now I just want to lay some basics so that we understand what that means. So scripture explains the Trinity like this. Number one, God is spirit. Our favorite verse, John 4, 24, right? The word says that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Furthermore, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 says, for the Lord is spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom or liberty. Number two, God is Jesus. John 1, 1 to 2 says, in the beginning was the word. Who is the word? Jesus Christ, right? The word become flesh. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John 10, 30 further says, where Jesus says, I and the father are one. Hallelujah. Number three, Christ is a life-giving spirit. Scripture tells us the first man, Adam, became a living person. But the last Adam, that is Christ, is a life-giving spirit. And that is 1 Corinthians 15, 45. So let me not drop this. An egg. So for those of us who have been in church for long, you know where I'm going with this. I am not throwing this on the floor, okay? <laughs> Please, guys, I'm not that. Pastor Audrey will have my hide if I were to do that. So what does an egg basically consist of? A shell, the albumen, which is egg white. There you learned a new word if you didn't know it. And egg yolk. Three things, but they all make up one egg. The egg isn't only the shell, the egg isn't only the albumen, and the egg isn't only the yolk. It's three in one. Same concept as what I explained to you now, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So from those scriptures that I just went through, we can see, number one, we said God is spirit. Number two, God is Jesus and they are one. Number three, Jesus is spirit. So they are all three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All three of them make up the Trinity and all three are God. Are we on the same page? And that's why we say the Holy Spirit is a person. In fact, the third person of the Trinity. Are we on the same page? Yes. Nice. So what is the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives? Okay. The workings, and this is another quote by Jack Hayford, the workings of the Holy Spirit are invisible, glorious, and gentle. And within them, he never tells us about himself. Why? He comes to glorify Jesus. He's helping us to see Jesus more to understand Jesus better. 
so that we can respond to Jesus more obediently and to love Jesus with a deeper heart of commitment. John 16, 13 to 15 says this, however, and this was Jesus explaining who the Spirit was to his disciples and to us. When he, the Spirit of truth, so we now see another characteristic of what the Holy Spirit does. He is the Spirit of truth. We do not have truth within ourselves. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, okay? Truth comes from God. That is the standard. So we don't conform to what culture is saying today. And I know we say it all the time. I don't have a version of the truth, and you don't have your own version of the truth. That is not what truth is. Truth is one thing. Truth cannot be different versions. All the different versions are, it's your perception. Very different to truth. Truth is truth. It is unchangeable, okay? And our God never changes. He is the source of truth. So the spirit of truth will help us to know truth, okay? So when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, amen? We lean on the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to us, not on mankind and definitely not on the culture of today, okay? For he will speak on his own authority, but what, for he will sorry, not speak on his own authority. But listen to this. Whatever the Holy Spirit hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. That's talking about Jesus. So the Holy Spirit serves to glorify Jesus. He will take of what is mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit will declare the words of Jesus to you. Amen. And all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. And now 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 14 says this, But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But listen to this. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the revealer. Amen. You want to know the things of God? You need the Holy Spirit. You want to understand the things of God? You need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because it is not our interpretation or understanding on its own that actually bears weight. It is the revelation that the Spirit of God gives to us that will lead us into truth and that will cause us to be established in faith. Hallelujah.